Bahrain. Good evening and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. The deputy king and crown prince, Israel Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued decree number 47 for the year 2018, reorganizing the Ministry of Finance. The Deputy King and Crown Princess Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued decree number 47 for the year 2018, appointing Nada Ahmed Mahmoud Mustafa as Assistant Under Secretary for Joint Services at the Ministry of Finance. The Deputy King and Crown Princess Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued decree number 49 for the year 2018 to transfer a number of directors and heads of financial resources departments in all ministries to the Ministry of Finance. The decree stated in Article 1 to transfer the following from the ministries of the Kingdom to the Ministry of Finance to fill the posts of Director of Financial Resources of the Assistant Under Secretary for Joint Financial Services who are Abdullah Ahmed Abdullah Bugah. Musa Yusuf Yaqub Al Sayed, Sahir Yusuf Al Has, Sahir Yusuf Hassan Yusuf Sater, Muhammad Ahmed Jassim Muhammad Al Attawi, Mustafa Muhammad Mustafa Al Marbati. Article two stated that all heads of financial resources departments in the ministries of the kingdom shall be transferred to the Ministry of Finance. Article three stated that the Minister of Finance shall appoint the directors mentioned in Article one of this decree and the heads of departments concerned with financial resources to assume the duties of supervising the management or financial resources department of any of the ministries of the kingdom. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, is Hana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Bahraini team continue the training and preparations for the Ironman Championship that will begin on Saturday. His Highness Sheikh Nasser led the Bahraini team during the swimming training. His Highness has been intensive, intensively training since his arrival in Kona to achieve the required technical readiness for the championship and eventually win a gold medal. The the Bahraini team expressed optimism of winning to make a new achievement for the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser is keen on participating in the championship to showcase the kingdom of Bahrain's capabilities in all fields. تغد في قمة الجاهزية وكل عداء يوصل هالمرحلة يعرف إن هذا خط ضعيف جدا بين إنه يحافظ على المستوى اللي يكسبه أو يفقد المستوى كله اللي يكسبه. فهذه المرحلة صعبة شوي تكون. أه نحاول احنا ان شاء الله نحافظ على الصحه ونحافظ على اللياقه ما عاد بقى شيء أه الايام اللي طافت كانت مرحله تاقلم والان مرحله استعداد ما في عداء يوصل بطوله العالم يقول لك بفوز بسهوله ما في الا اذا كان يكذب انا اقول لك الحقيقه انا مستعد للفوز مستعد ان شاء الله اكون في منصه التتويج أه اللي كاتبه الله بيصير و مثل ما دائما نوعد ان شاء الله الجميع وكل المتابعين يعني بالنتائج الطيبه ان شاء الله يبشرون بها the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, is Anna Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated in the press conference held for the Ironman Championship in Kona, United States. His Highness answered a number of questions during the press conference, affirming the support and follow up of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which are a source of pride and incentive for him to achieve positive results. His Highness noted that he is fully prepared for the championship, expressing as Inspiration to make a new achievement for the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed pride in the Bahraini team and the achievements they made in various championships, asserting that the team is keen on winning a gold medal and on raising the global status of the kingdom in this sport.
The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa attended the distribution ceremony for the Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa Award for charity work held under the patronage of the Governor of the Southern Governorate, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa. Sheikh Khalifa affirmed that the government encourages all initiatives that promote the culture of charitable work in society. He said Bahrain has provided an environment that strengthens charitable work, which has developed in the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, pointing out that the government has prepared all the possibilities that encourage youth people to engage in charitable works and develop the benefactor to serve their country in accordance with the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa expressed his pride in the initiative of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali and congratulated the the winners of the award. The governor of the Southern Governorate delivered a speech in which he stressed that every endeavor to serve humanity is carefully dedicated to Allah the Almighty and that charity is an integral part of the virtues of Islamic religion. His Highness noted with appreciation and gratitude the unlimited support of the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa who encouraged the establishment of the award. He recalled virtues of the late His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa and establishing many charitable and humanitarian organizations. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa handed over a prize in honor of His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa's role in charitable work. It was received by Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and the Deputy Premier Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The Governor also distributed his award for charity work to the honorees. A documentary film about the contributions of the late Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa was screened.
The Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, today issued directives forming and activating six government task forces to reduce government operational expenditure as part of the newly announced fiscal balance program. The Deputy Prime Minister issued Edict No. 2 of 2018, forming six government task forces as follows. First, the Government Building Maintenance Task Force led by the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning. Two, Government Building Rented Task Force led by the Minister, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. The Travel and Transport Task Force led by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications. The ICT Task Force led by the Information and E-Government Authority's Chief Executive. And Medical Resources Task Force led by the Minister of Health and Other Operational Expenditure Task Force led by the Minister of Housing. The Deputy Prime Minister also issued Circular No. 3 of 2018 outlining key steps as part of the task force's remit to streamline operational government expenses. Purchase requests from government entities are submitted to the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance submits purchase requests to the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs for initial review. Ministry of Finance refers purchase requests to the relevant task force. Task force in collaboration with the Assistant Under Secretary for Joint Financial Services at the Ministry of Finance review the purchase requests and submit their recommendations to the Ministry of Finance. The Ministry of Finance submits the task force's recommendations to the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs. The Ministerial Committee approves or rejects or re-evaluates purchase requests based on the task force's recommendations. Reducing government operational expenditure is one of these six initiatives launched following the announcement of the fiscal balance program that aims to balance the government's budget by 2022, while enhancing service delivery to citizens. The fiscal balance program will continue to strengthen the kingdom's long-term fiscal stability and in turn safeguard and enhance sustainable private sector-led growth. Protecting and defending human rights and dignity regionally and internationally is considered a priority for the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Kingdom also puts human rights in the foundations of all its efforts in cooperation with external bodies and civil society organizations to build a more prosperous society. More details in this report. Historically, the Kingdom of Bahrain has been the cradle of an ancient civilization built on peace and harmony. Its history, geographical location and human heritage shaped the kingdom into a land that embraces the coexistence of people of different religious and cultural backgrounds and from the same vein the kingdom has always promoted the values of tolerance and respect for human dignity. The reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which was launched in 2001, reaffirmed that the promotion and protection of human rights as an essential part of the Kingdom's strategy in developing state institutions and national legislation. This is exemplified in the National Action Charter and the Constitution of 2002, and the subsequent constitutional amendment, which was approved by the Legislature in 2012. Moreover, National legislation such as those concerning freedom of opinion, religious freedoms, labor laws, support of civil society organizations and unions, and the criminalization of trafficking in persons reflect the growing respect for rights and liberties in the kingdom. The Kingdom of Bahrain signed and ratified a number of regional and international agreements and conventions including the Arab Charter on Human Rights, the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. The Kingdom also ratified the Convention on Eliminations of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the Convention Against Torture, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the Optional Protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child with regard to child involvement in armed conflicts, the Optional Protocol to the Convention of the Rights of the Child regarding child sale, prostitution and pornography, and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. The Kingdom of Bahrain established itself as a role model in transparency and integrity by further developing the instruments of political participation and adopting a dual system consisting of the Council of the Representatives and the Shura Council. Furthermore, the Kingdom developed its human rights mechanism by ensuring the independence of the National Institute for Human Rights in line with the Paris Principles, establishing the Independent Ombudsman Office, establishing the Prisoners' and Detainees' Rights Commission, and establishing the Special Investigation Units in the Public Prosecution Office, as well as ensuring the independence of the Ministry of Interior's Complaint Bureau. In addition to the National Institute for Human Rights, the Supreme Council for Women continues its active role in empowering women and ensuring gender equality, aligned with the Kingdom's constitution and national legislations. 
Additionally, the Bahrain Institute for Political Development also plays an important role in political education and in bolstering the practice of rights and protection of liberties. The chairperson of the National Institute for Human Rights, NIHR Maria Khoury, confirmed it that the Kingdom of Bahrain will be effective to work within the Council in spreading the universal aspects of international principles related to human rights and will play a major role if elected in making necessary recommendations. She highlighted the efforts of the Ombudsman, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Supreme Council for Women for promoting human rights. What I would like to say about elections specifically in Bahrain is that everyone's opinion matters uh, and the voice should be represented uh, in the House of Parliament. Uh, a person or individual becomes a part of the development process. That's why it's very important. Uh, it continues to build trust, which is very critical as well. And I always say, when you give someone a big responsibility, such as being a in, in the parliament, you have to also hold him accountable. So members of parliament are responsible and should be held uh, accountable uh, as well. Yes. Of course, the right to take part in the uh, and, and be a part of public affairs through uh, parliament, including uh, the right to vote and stand for election, is a necessary and fun fundamental component of any environment that protects and promotes human rights. Meanwhile, NIHR Secretary General Dr. Khalifa bin Ali Al Fadl affirmed that electing Bahrain in the human rights national level will contribute positively to the promotion of human rights on the international level. Well, first of all, uh, Bahrain is one of few states in the world to have five human rights uh, oversight bodies. There's the National Institution for Human Rights, the Ombudsman, the National Security Agency uh, Ombudsman, the SIU, the Special Investigation Unit, and the PDRC. So Bahrain has done a lot to, to in the promotion and protection of human rights on the national level. However, with regard to the Human Rights Council, Bahrain was one of the first states to become a member in the Human Rights Council when it was first launched as an international human rights mechanism. Bahrain has contributed a lot uh, when it was elected in 2006 in the Human Rights Council, and I believe it is very necessary and important for Bahrain to have uh, uh, a role in the foreseeable future when elected again in the Human Rights Council, since I believe firmly that Bahrain uh, needs to influence uh, or provide its input and influence to other states and international uh, bodies and stakeholders with regard to the protection and promotion of human rights on an international uh, level. The University Medical Center of King Abdullah Medical City and the Arabian Gulf University is celebrating World Side Day in conjunction with the World Health Organization's campaign under the slogan, I Care Everywhere, aiming to focus global attention on blindness and vision impairment, raise public awareness and influence policymakers to support and improve national eye care programs. World Side Day, observed annually on the second Thursday of October, is a global event. The celebration will include a test to measure eye pressure of students and faculty of AGU to raise awareness and identify eye diseases that can be avoided through regular eye examination to detect causes of blindness and weak vision. As AGU, the Arabian Gulf University and the King Abdullah Medical City, we are celebrating this to increase awareness of the importance of uh, sight and uh, the matters that uh, help to maintain our sights and uh, being able to see. It's a very important uh, day, especially these days we, when we are dealing with the new technologies, the uh, iPhones, uh, the smartphones, the iPads, the computers, which really affect our uh, sites. Actually, we are celebrating this day in uh, addition to other activities that we are celebrating at uh, Arabian Gulf University. And uh, we at the College of Medicine and Medical Science uh, celebrate this event. And we try to encourage our students to contribute and to share in all uh, activities that's uh, going around, especially that will give them a lot of experience in organizing and uh, try to uh, 
encourage them to contribute to these events. This is recommended uh, by the WHO and uh, mainly by the International Agency for Prevention of Blindness, which belongs to the WHO. And they have had this global initiative, which is called 2020, which means that uh, by 2020, there should not be any blindness in the world that is avoidable or preventable. And this initiative was started in 1999, and uh, the aim of the initiative is to uh, uh, increase the awareness of uh, eye diseases, eye problems, especially things to do with preventable blindness. Uh, so uh, not only individuals, but also institutions and policymakers should put into account to do all possible measures to prevent uh, all diseases that may lead to blindness.